Let's focus on Nasty's mixed messaging on vaccine. Many worried about vaccine shopping and hesitancy, which could possibly slow down the rollout. It comes as trends begin to decline in Ottawa. More younger people, of course, now eligible to receive the vaccine. There are hopes that the current lockdown restrictions have been helping to flatten the curve of transmission. Let's get the take of epidemiologist Dr. Ray Dianand. And good morning, Dr. Ray. Good morning. When you put out the uh, the tweet this morning, you were coming on. Someone said, "Give Nassie hell." You want to <laughs> you want to do that, Dr. Ray? I'm sympathetic to Nassie. Their job is to give advice to decision makers about vaccines. Their job is not to engage with the public, and yet now they're engaging with the public and not doing a good job. The messaging is atrocious. The use of the word preferred vaccine is particularly troublesome because maybe you've got a, pre a preference in uh, Perrier over tap water, but if you're dying of thirst, you'll take either one, right? So what you prefer is gated by your individual risk and the emergency that you're in right now. So there are parts of the country and parts of the world where you can't afford to wait for the preferred vaccine. And uh, no one wants to think they're getting a second class vaccine. I mean, let's talk about the Johnson Johnson vaccine for a second. It's one dose, it's stored easily, it transports well. So it's really great for remote areas, homeless populations, uh, nomadic populations. So for them, that is the preferred vaccine because that's the one that's going to work the best in that population. So there's power in words and they need to use the words a bit more carefully. When the supply starts coming in and maybe you could have a choice and some after this advice and others who are saying, you know, AstraZeneca gets a bad rep. That being said, if I've got one inside of me and others, many others have as well. If we want a second shot, I'm cool with AstraZeneca, but my, my, some people may say I want Pfizer or Moderna. Are there any consequences of doing that? It looks like no. So we call this a heterologous prime boosting. And this is common in other vaccines. And in fact, it's being tried now in a big clinical trial in England, comparing whether or not you can get boosted by a mRNA vaccine if you got AstraZeneca as the first one. There is every scientific reason to expect this not only to work, but maybe even be better. So I would not panic on this front at all. Get boosted by another vaccine, it's fine. Okay, stay at home order, expiring May 20th. We got the long weekend the following weekend. If it were up to you, would you extend it to the 25th of May? I would, and here's why. Um, we The modeling suggests that the best case scenario is at the end of May, we'll have 500 people in ICUs. That's still too high. That's not a place we want to plateau. We've got a shot at crushing this thing now so that we have the ramp to normal in the summer. Why do you want to play with this? Let's just you know take our medicine now, uh, suffer a bit longer with appropriate supports for people who need it, and so make life easier in the long run. Okay, you're teasing us with a return possibly of summer if we do this right. So let's, let me dig yeah. deeper, that's what I do. What does that summer look like if we wait until the 25th of May, potentially? Well, I think wait until the 25th of May and, and extend even further than that so we get the transmission down as low as we possibly can so we buy time for more vaccination. And given the new rollout of vaccines, I think there's, a, there's some optimism now. I think come July, we'll start seeing some things open up. We'll have uh, family gatherings, probably mask wearing still, but I think the fear will start to abate then uh, and the uh, warm weather will make transmission even less so, so that we enter a fall that is every day being better than the previous one. So the dawn will come up in July and the sun will stay high in the sky and remain so. That is my prediction. Please let me be right. <laughs> yes, please. Uh, <laughs> do you want to pick a date in June where you'd extend it to? Because it sounds maybe up to <laughs> 21st, it sounds like. I don't think it's a good idea to choose dates. I think we have to gate this via the metrics, watch the test positivity rate, watch the incidence rate, watch the reproduction number, and make decisions based upon the real data, not on some arbitrary data. That's why you're good at what you do, sir. Dr. Ray Dianand, and I always appreciate your insights and your expertise. Thank you.